Hey everybody, it's me again, Darla. I'm back uh, for my vacation, my reunion tour of 2022. Uh, <laughs> I had a great time, went to a lot of places that I wanted to go, seen a lot of people. Uh, I'm sorry, my eyes keep watering. But yeah, my uh, just a highlight of my trip when I got there. My um, nephew's daughter was having uh, her 18th birthday, so they had a little surprise party for her. And that was a really great way to start off my vacation. It was a lot of laughter, good food, drinks. So that, that was a lot of fun. And then uh, I, I had my high school 50th reunion, and we had it two days. And that was really nice because it was just a bunch of 70-year-old people talking war stories, you know, what has happened in their life, you know, surgeries, all that good stuff. Families, where we've been, what we've been doing. So it was a very uh, nice uh time and uh we got fantastic the pictures they did a group picture uh the second day and that was really fun i didn't realize it till later but they had us walking outside and down a hill under a tree and we're all like oh my god we're all old people how are we going to do this and uh come to find out he was filming one of the guys was filming as we were walking out and stuff. And so he played it like a little fast, looked a little cartoonish. It was really cool. So I had a fantastic time there. Me and my sister, sister number two, uh, drove to Iowa to see my grandson and his girlfriend. We stayed there a few days, did a little antiquing, went swimming at the hotel pool, watched a movie. My grandson cooked for me, so that was kind of nice and interesting um, and drove to nebraska to see my daughter my granddaughter pregnant and is expecting in october we had a baby shower for her, so that was really fun to go out and shop for her buy all the stuff we had it outside at a shelter but it was right by the river there and even though it was extremely hot when i went back home you know with humidity and stuff uh having the baby shower there by the lake we got this nice cool breeze so it kind of, you know, felt nice up there. You know, it was up on like a little hill. Sorry, my hair, I need a haircut. And I just washed it, so it's like unruly. But yeah, so we did that. We spent, uh, I had a hotel room and pool, so we went swimming. My grandson, who is 10, stayed with us, I think, two nights. Uh, my daughter, she was like, I'm staying with you the whole time. I need a vacation. I go, that's fine. So she stayed with us every night, me and my sister. Uh, then my granddaughter stayed two nights. So we, you know, we had fun, socialized. We played games. We were a gaming family, pretty much. We liked board games or, you know, the Mario Party uh if you have never played Mario Party, that is like the best board game. It, it, that's what it is, a board game, but it's electronic. You pick a character, just like you would pick a, you know, the shoe on Monopoly. You roll dice, and you just hit your little receipt, little remote up like that. Your character jumps and hits the dice, and, and they automatically move to whatever you spawn. The object of the game is to get... Uh, stars the one that has the most stars you know wins and uh you have to buy the stars you earn coins uh from mini games and once four everybody has a turn there's a little mini game at the end and everybody it could be an individual game you could play you could be two against two or one against three you never know, they're random games, and uh, so those are fun, and it, it was just a fun time, you know, uh, playing board games is always fun, and laugh, and you, you know, oh, what, you're cheating over there? How, how'd you get that, you know, so it was a lot of fun. Then we, and we had great weather, I mean, the weather for driving, we had a little rain in Iowa, it was gone in no time, so I was appreciative of that, you know, driving, 
you know, two old ladies driving. You don't want to be in uh, any kind of rain. Even though I, when I left Las Vegas right after that, I guess they had all kinds of rain and floods. And they said it rained every night, thunderstorms, lightning, and really loud. So uh, I, I missed that. And east, I missed it there too. Once we got back from um, Nebraska... I stopped again at my grandson's so, because it's six hours from Nebraska to Iowa, and then from Iowa to my sister's is four hours. So we stopped at my grandson's uh, place again. We went out to eat. That gave us a little break in, in that 10 hour drive. And uh, we got home, and um, then we pretty much waited for my baby sister to come that week, that Friday. She came, we went and picked her up from the airport. The next day, we, uh, all four of us girls, went down to southern Indiana to a family reunion. And uh, that was fun because we have an auction every year and people bring, you know, it could just be stuff they made or it almost looked like a yard sale, some of the stuff we had out there. They either made it or they bought it or they had brought it from home. And we have an auction. We start off with a quarter. But, it, you know, some stuff get up to five bucks or eight dollars, you know. And we have a lot of fun. And I filmed all that on my GoPro, and I haven't edited that yet. But I'm going to be uh, going through that. I think I got a lot of good clips of the family. We just have a great time doing that. Calling out for stuff and out, trying to outbid somebody else for <laughs> an item, you know. I got to see a lot of people, you know. Then uh, we went, me and my baby sister, while we were down in southern Indiana, because most of my family are from southern Indiana. So a lot of the, that's where a lot of them are buried. So we always try to stop down there and maybe see graves and, uh, you know, check out the grave sites, see what's going on. Well, I had a great grandma I wanted to find and a great great grandma I wanted to find. One was on my dad's side and one on my mother's side. One on my dad's side was a great grandma, his grandmother. And uh, based on my mom's diary from that time, she died in, I want to say, 1944, something like that. My dad went to the funeral. And my mom quoted, you know, posted that in her diary at the time. So I was real excited to go there because I always get a real good vibration when I'm at the gravesite, especially if I know like like this, I knew my dad, maybe my mom was there, you know, some of my other ancestors were there. So it always gives me a, such a good feeling to have my ancestors' spirits, I guess, around. So... You know, I had kind of looked up the graveyards and seen where they were, and put put it in my GPS, right? So I'm driving, and we see the cemetery. Now, these cemeteries, they're out in the boonies, okay? Uh, there's just cornfields around them. Sometimes there's no houses around there. There's just, and all of a sudden, there's a cemetery there. And so this is how it was. It was, we turned down a little dirt road or a little gravel road, and the first... Um, road into the cemetery I missed and I was like my sisters you missed the road well you know they're kind of hard to see until you're up on them almost because they're not used that often these are old graveyards and they may have people still being buried there but uh, some don't have current burials so the roads even though they upkeep the graveyards really well in Indiana the the roads to them they're kind of hard to see unless you actually see it straight forward and then you can see the tire tracks we passed the first road and i said well i think there's an opening down there so we go to the second one we pull in there and i just kind of parked the car and as i was looking over it was a fairly good sized graveyard and as looking over the graveyard i was just get out here and start walking usually that's what we do and i looked down at the graveyard right there and there was Great grandma right there. I had stopped right by Great Grandma. Oh, teary I now, thinking about it. And of course, you know, I started crying. My sister started crying. I said, There's Great Grandma right there. So we got out to make sure yeah, that was her and her husband. And the stone looked pretty good. I mean, it looked like somebody had set it up on marble. Next to the grave was a little baby um, grave headstone. And it had a lamb. Her name was Sophia. Now, when I got back to the hotel and looked up the information on Ancestry, yes, that was her daughter who had died when she was two. 
Now, I had no information on this little girl, just her name. So, off of the tombstone, I got when she was born and when she died. That's why sometimes these are very important because um, you only get so much information on, on the Internet if people have put the information out there. So, uh, you know, there's a site called Find a Grave. People volunteer, they'll go out and they may take pictures of a graveyard and they may list 20 names around their family, put dates and deaths and births and like that. But they're mainly doing their family. As an example of this, years ago I uh, was researching for a graveyard. And when I looked it up, it looked like there was only about 35 people were there. Well, one of the names was Mayfield. So I was like, okay, a Mayfield was here. When I actually went to the graveyard, the graveyard was enormous. But who had put this on find a grave, only put their family in. Of course, mine fell in that little area they were, you know, researching. So it's always good to go to the graveyards and find your family and get information. So I was so excited that we found her. We didn't have to go nowhere else. We kind of walked around a little bit in the area, but there was nobody else there that we recognized. The second great-grandma, uh, we come up to a little grave. It was a very little grave, very old grave, and uh, there was a couple houses kind of close to it. I mean, the graveyard just kind of went in their backyard almost, you know. That's how close the houses were. I, uh, once again, parked. I found uh, a tombstone with a name on it of my grandma. And so I took a video and a picture, and it was already, you know, in Indiana a lot of times they get a lot of that rain. And a lot of these graveyards are by ravines. You know, they're little creeks or I seen it was my actual, my grandmother's uh, child. And so, and they were all buried there, but that was the only tombstone I seen. On Find a Grave, it could have been several years since they had that picture in there. But I was glad I was able to document it before it's destroyed and falls into the ravine. So that was kind of a highlight that was pretty interesting, <laughs> like right away. Uh, another little in interesting thing that happened, we were driving around in the dark. Now, we kind of know that area, but like me, I was a kid uh, driving through the, those areas. So we had our GPS on, and of course GPS would take you different ways, better routes. And we come upon this church, and we go, oh my God, that's a church by Aunt Corrine used to live. And we look across the road, and there's a house, and I, we're like, oh, there's her house. Well, it wasn't her house. Somebody had redone another house there, but it was the same property because I remember the tree in the yard. But GPS brought us right there to the church and to Aunt Corrine's house. It also took us to an area in a small town where my grandmother lived, and uh, she lived by the um, fairgrounds. And when we used to leave her house and come out on the main road to head home, she would stand on the back porch and she could see us around the curb there to head out. And she would stand there and be waving at us. And so GPS brought us to that area that we used to see Grandma. It was so crazy and it was, it was kind of eerie that it was like a, the spirits were guiding us. From there, we ended up going to Michigan. I spent time with my sister's, uh, my friend's sister, and uh, we had a great time. Drove me around the little uh, beach area, showed me all what, you know, has been developed. And uh, we, we had cheesecake. I put a picture on my Instagram about that, but that was nice. And then, uh, the next day, I headed down to uh, the casino where my sisters were at. You know, we played a little bit and went home. And me and uh, my baby sister, we did go antiquing a little bit. We found a couple items, you know, that we either mailed home or packed, packed them and <laughs> got them home. So it was a lot of fun. Now, I, can, I do say that it's not easy to fly, uh, especially when you're short 
overweight and old, <laughs> you know, and carrying things on you. I don't care if you just carry a purse on you. After you're walking through those ter terminals and, you know, trying to get down to your luggage, it, it's very tiresome on you, you know, your shoulders hurt, everything aches. <laughs> so it was good to get home. I give out a shout out to my son and Bill for coming and getting our luggage and helping us and my sister because we were like wore out by that by that point, you know, flying and going through time changes. That was uh, the extent of my tour. And like I said, it was a great time, great weather, a little hot, but glad to be home. And uh, I'm going to review a couple of the items I took with me and let you know how they stood up. So until then, I'll talk to you later, alligator. Bye.